Okay, so on your desk you should have your EIE notebook. We switched up from the science notebook to the EIE notebook because we are going to get into our engineering design. So what I want to talk about for today is the ecosystem from the storybook. So who can raise your hand and tell me what they see in this ecosystem that we talked about? What do you see in front of you? A bear. Okay, he sees a bear. What else do you see? Okay, there's an eagle, okay. So let's take a look. What makes the picture that you're looking at a food web? Look at what, see where all the arrows are pointing onto the food web and who it's pointing to. I want to clarify something real quick. A group over there mentioned, um, why is the butterfly pointed to the mouse or the rat and then the rat is pointed to the bear? Now, it's not saying that the butterfly eats the rat or the rat eats the bear, okay? That technically doesn't make too much sense, but what it's showing you is the energy that's being given, okay, to the next one. So if you're looking at a butterfly, who's the butterfly giving energy to? The rat. And who is the rat giving energy to? The bear. So what we're gonna do today is take a look at our lesson. So our lesson for today is called a slick idea. I want you to go ahead and open up your notebook, open up your EIE notebook, and I want you to copy down this question for today. It says, how might an oil spill affect an ecosystem? And what are some materials, tools, and methods we can use to clean it? And this is what we're going to base our engineering design project today on, is this question. OK, so as you're finishing up your notes, today we are going to get a chance to become an ecosystem. Each one of you are going to play a role in our ecosystem. We know from what we've discussed that everything's connected. Who remembers what a producer is? A producer involves what? How do you make your own food? Can we stand outside and be like, son, feed me? Does it, does it work that way? OK, you wish, that'd be, that would be cheap on our end. We don't have to pay for our food, OK? What's, what, what do they do? What's the process called? Photosynthesis, OK? So producers, so if we all agree that it's photosynthesis, show me that we agree. Okay, what about consumers? Can everybody point to a consumer in the room? Okay, you can point to yourselves. Can you pick a different consumer in the room? <laughs> okay, so we're all consumers, okay? It's any object, not object, or thing, okay, that eats, that needs something, okay? So we've talked about producer, we've talked about consumer, Let's jump to a decomposer. So if you take a look over here, a decomposer, and here's some of them, these aren't all of them, are bacteria. You have algae, we talked about that earlier, and we have also something called fungus. So remember I mentioned to you guys that we're gonna become our own ecosystem? Yeah. Okay, well we're gonna be creating our own food web. Go ahead and take a look at the cards I gave you. There is a picture on one, and there is something else on the other side, okay? There's a question on the other side. Put it on, put on your sign for a second. Make sure the picture faces out, okay? When you have it on. I need you to find your partner. Some of you have matching cards, some of you may not. And that's what I want you to see who's left, okay? So quietly stand up, push in your chairs, and you're kind of kind of look for your partner and then stand next to them when you find them. Now, this is what I'm looking for now. Are you a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer? And where do you get water from? We get water from other places. I get food energy from... I'm algae. I'm a producer. I, I live both. I live on land and in the water, and I get water from the river and other places. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Okay, we're gonna kind of try to create a circle. There's not a lot of room up front, but I want you to kind of come and create a circle. Stand next to whoever has the same card as you, though. This way. Okay, eyes back on me. Let's start with the deer. Where's my deers at? Okay. <laughs> I am a deer and I am a consumer. I live on land. I get I get water from the river. Okay. And what do you get energy from? Grass. 
okay, grass or plants. So what he's going to do over here is he's going to make a line from the deer to the green plants. So he's helping us create our connection here. So now we're going to go ahead and do green plants, okay, to the sun. So if he's making our web, you go bear to deer. Also put a line to the adult salmon. Green plants. And the goals as well. What? <laughs> okay. If we lose somebody in our ecosystem, will something else be affected? Yes. Yeah. It, it trickles down. It trickles down. It trickles down. It it is all connected, and we work as a whole. So, is it important? I'll go back to my question. Is it important that as um, environmental engineers, do we need to know how all this works? Yes. Yes, yes we do. Okay. So before we start, let's look at this. You're deciding your materials and the spellings up here for you, which column would you put the materials? If we're testing it out with oil, which column? Would it go containing the oil? Would the object go in removing the oil? Okay. Now, this is the pre-planning part. We haven't done the experiment, we haven't done the model, but we're brainstorming. We're deciding before we start, what do you think? Okay. No wrong answers, because this is the pre-part. But I want you to see what your bag contains, what's inside your bag. So take all the objects out. You can match it with what's up here. And start filling out your index card. Start filling out your chart. So, okay, that's up. Who remembers what this one is? A pool boot, a pipe. Everybody repeat after me. Say pipette. Pipet. Repeat it one more time. Pipette. Okay. So, where do you think this will go? Which column do you think this will go under? Would it be contained? Okay. Oh, no, it. It's either containing or removing. What do you guys think? Notice how you guys each have a yellow sheet. Okay. You're going to test each material to see how well it contains the oil. Record your observations in the table below. Okay. I want you to see how well you can contain the oil. Kind of like move it a little. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it looks containing. Oh, so here's my string, so everybody take a look. What do you see happening with the string right now? It's absorbing the oil. It's absorbing some of the oil, because if you guys take a look, lean over some so you guys can take a look. It soaked it up. How do you compare it to the rubber band? Which one of those two do you think? This one. I'd rather go string. String? So how many people vote string? Anybody vote rubber band? It doesn't do that much. It will take years to clean out the river. Yes, it will. If everybody was using a bunch of spoons. Didn't. Okay. My thorn. Okay. You guys have been doing a really good job. I just want to go ahead and finish so that way we can review and close out the lesson for today. I want you to take a look at your card. Take a look at the card. I'm going to take a vote for each object. I want you to tell me, now look up here. A check plus means it did a really good job. Okay? It did a really good job of removing the oil, of doing what it was supposed to do, or containing it. The one, the check in the middle means it did okay. It did some. Check minus means it didn't work. The material, we tested it, we did it, it did not work. I want you to take a look at our chart. Based on what we all saw, our observations, what we did with our experiment, we noticed that under the check plus column, the one that you guys said, based on your experiment, you guys said the cotton ball, and I'll do it in a different color so you guys can see it better. The cotton ball and the nylon work the best. The ones that did okay, you guys said was the yarn, and it looks like maybe the felt that did okay, that did decent. You guys said rubber band did the worst, yeah. okay? And he told us three reasons of why it didn't do too well. So we kind of have an idea. Taking the data 
that we have, how can we improve? What are your suggestions? I say we can combine the cotton ball and the nylon together because it seems like it's the, it's the two best that works. So what she said was, what happens if we combine the two? We know these two work the best, so why not combine it and use that material? Yeah. Okay. So do we feel better as environmental engineers? Do we have a, a better idea of yeah. how we can go ahead and find our solution? Yeah. So if you guys were the characters in the story, could you help out Thomas? Do you think you can put more input in? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So nice job. In lesson three, the students get a chance to see what the materials are. And I think that's really important because a lot of times when we do experiments, we just hand everything over to them and then expect them to do it. But with lesson three, they actually see how the materials work, what doesn't work. And that goes for all the lesson threes for EIE. And the nice thing is when they're able to touch and manipulate everything, they have a better grasp now when they get into your planning piece, your creating piece, and of course, your improving piece. <laughs>